Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about the future of mobile development and security research for iOS and I believe also Android devices. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the new Corellium platform that's uh, set to be released sometime in March this year. So some of you guys may have heard of this. It's been announced quite a while ago, but I've only just got around to making this video. Now this is an upcoming platform that's going to allow developers, uh, mobile developers, to essentially virtualize any mobile device hardware uh, through this platform and allowing them to test on various different devices without actually having to physically have those devices. Now, this is not the same as simulation as we get with Xcode and with other, other platforms uh, where you would just simulate the iOS on a different iPhone um, through the Mac. This is actually a virtualized hardware, so it's going to be ex basically a one-to-one -one clone of the device as if the device was a physical device. It's going to be an emulated or um, virtualized ARM chip and it's going to have every aspect of the operating system on it. So. Here is their Twitter account. Uh, they haven't really posted a lot other than the fact that it's going to be released in March. Uh, we also have a website here which basically doesn't have anything on it apart from a request early access button. The only thing we do have at the moment that allows us to have a little sneak peek of what this is going to look like is a couple of tweets from people who are currently beta testing this software. So on their uh, official Twitter page, if you scroll down, you'll see a couple of retweets from people who have posted screenshots of the software actually running. So the first one here from Chris Wade, you can see he's tweeted this with two screenshots. Now the first screenshot here shows um, a screenshot from, from within Xcode's device and simulator manager. Now you can see this connected iPhone here named iPhone. You can see the info about it. So it's running iOS 11.2.5, it's an iPhone 6, it's got 11 gigabytes and the serial number is Corellium i6 which is obviously not a real serial number because this is actually a virtualized hardware. Now this is not a real iPhone but Xcode will essentially just assume it is and treat it as one because of how real, uh, how one-to-one -one this virtualization is. So this is going to allow developers to essentially connect up other iPhone hardware that they don't actually own or they've not actually bought, but it will act the same way as if they did really have these physical devices. So you may be wondering why this is even needed since we do already have the simulator that comes with Xcode. Now, if you've used the simulator, you'll know it allows you to test basically um, your apps that you build with Xcode on various different I iOS device simulators at different screen sizes. So here's the iPhone 10 one. Um, and this allows you to just test your apps, test the functionality of them using through this sort of simulated iOS version. Now, this is actually going to be very different to what this virtualized hardware is, whereas because this is actually running through the Mac, obviously it's running on an x86 processor, not an ARM processor, and it's not really running iOS in the sense that it's not gone through the secure boot chain, it's not um, a full, it's not the sort of build of iOS that you'd find on a real iPhone. This is just the sort of high level stuff, just so you can actually test your UI. Um, within Springboard. Now, what these virtualized iPhones are, these are literally the same thing as a real iPhone, just without having to be able to physically touch them. So you can use these exactly the same way as a real iPhone, and therefore for app developers, it's going to give you a more reliable way of testing apps, because sometimes within the simulator, you'll get different results just because of the fact it's not a real iPhone. So if you're testing some kind of app that's really complex, you may possibly get different results in the simulator than you would when you actually run it on a physical device. Whereas if you decide to test with the virtualized hardware instead, then you will get the exact same result on this virtualized hardware as on the real device. Now that's just one of the ways this is going to benefit app developers, but the real reason this is in the news a lot at the moment and it's a hard topic of discussion is because of how it's going to benefit security professionals and iOS researchers. So because of the fact that these virtualized hardware is obviously not real Apple hardware, uh, there's no real control over what Apple can allow to run on them. So we can have sort of customized versions of iOS and allow things that we wouldn't normally be allowed with a real iPhone. Um, and that's what has allowed us to uh, do this next thing. So here is this uh, tweet here by M. Dowd, who's also been testing this uh, platform. And here he's posted a screenshot or an image of kernel debugging and scripting with Cycrypt on Corellium. So this first image here shows live kernel debugging on a 64-bit iOS device. I'm not sure exactly what version this is, but he is attached uh, to the kernel process through IDA Pro and is live debugging it. Um, which is a huge deal for a recent version of iOS. Now, we've been able to do this before on older devices such as the iPhone 4 with the LimeRain exploit because we've, we've obviously boot room exploits. It's much easier to get down with low-level things and mess around with things like that. But this is a huge deal and it's not really... I don't think this has been done before um, on any 64-bit device, uh, but it's now possible due to this virtualized hardware because obviously it's not real Apple hardware, but the actual iOS uh, that's running on it is one-to-one -one with the real iOS. So... This is going to make it so much easier for anyone relate, uh, anyone poking around with iOS or anyone interested in kernel security, anything like that, much easier to discover vulnerabilities and debug them and figure out what's actually going on. So it's going to make it a whole lot easier for anyone researching or attempting to maybe even make jailbreaks in the, in the future. 
So hopefully we will see this lead to great things for the jailbreak community because people will have much easier time uh, discovering new vulnerabilities in the iOS kernel. Now, uh, he also did post the second image. This one shows um, Cycrypt, uh, which is actually built into this. Now, if you don't know what Cycrypt is, it's essentially a platform written by Jay Freeman that allows you to um, attach the processes and hook and overwrite methods. Um, I've actually got a video on it in my playlist of iOS hacking and security research. So if you go in here, there is a video somewhere in there on how to use Cycrypt if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, the main thing is the kernel debugging ability. So hopefully uh, this will, as I said, bring some good things to the jailbreak community as it is gonna make it a whole lot easier. Unfortunately, it's not coming out till March and even when it does come out, I think it's still only gonna be released to sort of a select few of uh, people. But if you are a developer and you're actually interested in using this, then you can go here and request early access and you just need to put your name, company, if you have one and your email address and then you'll be added to sort of their list and then uh, you have a chance of, I guess, getting early access to this whenever it does launch. So unfortunately, that's pretty much all the information we've currently got on this. I couldn't really find any other things showing actual uh, use of this platform other than those two tweets. And uh, as I said, the website is very limited in what information it gives. If you search up Corellium iPhone on Google, you'll find many articles talking about how this is going to be an Apple hacker's paradise and things like that. But other than what I've just showed you, I, I couldn't find any other information or uh, demos of what this actually is going to look like yet. So we're going to have to wait until March, um, but hopefully uh, we will see some good stuff when it does come out. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave a link to corellium.com in the description if you want to sort of request an invite on this. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.